introducing rhythm with primary students, a really clever idea is to use this concept of a clapping square. So a clapping square allows students to visually follow a beat as it moves around the square. So if you just have a quick look. <coughs> can be reset to start again and again with your class. What I would be doing is asking my students to clap on the first beat to emphasise the cycle of beats like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We can make this more complex by introducing two groups of students with group A following the top square, group B following the bottom square. Group 1 would be clapping on the first beat, group 2 would be clapping on the first part of the second group. Take the idea even further, now instead of just 1, 2, 3, 4, we can subdivide our beat, so we can have 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. So this square, just to start with, still shows just the main beats, but I'd be asking the students to speak the word and on the black dot in between, the subdivisions. So now we'd be going 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. And if they're really clever, clapping on the 1 and the 2 and the 3 and the 4 and just speaking the and in between. Ideas with these are endless. There are many variations. They can be broken up into four groups of students. We can have three beats instead of four beats. They're a really, really great idea for getting kids to zero in on rhythm and to keep in time without speeding up. Okay, this is just a chart that I would use with my students to help explain the different music symbols that I'd be using, um, particularly with uh, junior and middle primary, but upper primary, good to reinforce as well. Four different ways you can think of each musical symbol. So we can have a very simple visual name. This note looks like an egg, so with younger students that's something they remember. An egg with a stick can be drawn two ways. A bad egg, because it's coloured in black with a stick. Two feet walking, upside down or on the ground. Um, over here we've got our squiggle, our hat and our upside down hat. So they're really good names for junior primary students. Whoops. Um, How many counts they are in blue, so four counts, two counts, etc. Official names, semi briefs, minims, crotchets, quavers, I'd be using that with my middle and upper primary. And then I think the greatest one you can use with primary students is the final name in green, which is how it sounds. So how I speak it now is how the note actually sounds when I play it in music. So my egg is called a ta a a a, -a and that means my sound travels for that length of time. Uh, 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 and then I stop the sound on my instrument. This note would be a ta, uh, so a two beat sound. My bad egg with a stick is just a ta. My two feet walking is called a tt, so that's how I make my sound, tt. My squiggle is a za, like a, a sleeping z, so we say za, that's our rest. A hat is a two count rest, za, a. Uh and an upside down hat, a four count rest, za, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Children speaking these names while they play music um, is a really easy way for them to be reading rhythm really accurately. Okay, over here what we've got created is our manuscript of music. So these are our music lines I explain to children what we write music on. And over here I've got some collections of different rhythms. Together we would read what these rhythms are and we would clap them using those green names we just spoke about. So this first rhythm, ta, 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 we speak it first, now we clap it while we speak it. Ta, 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 ta. And now that we know what that sounds like, what we can do is drag it up here and we've made a first part of our song. Now we'd like to choose something else. We're going to choose ta, za. Ta za, so we clap and speak. Ta za, ta za. Okay, let's add that to our song now. And we've got space for two more, so I'd ask a student which would you like, see if they can come up and speak it. Someone's chosen this one. Ta a, ta a, so over we go. 
and we might finish with the one we started with. So back we go to the ta 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 ta. Now, now that we've done that, this a really long rhythm for students. So we get them to speak it very carefully through, just making sure they can do that. Now we've got some traffic lights and we can introduce the idea of this rhythm now being said, clapped, played on a drum at varying speeds. So I've got red for an incredibly slow speed, a good starting off point, medium for the orange light and fast for the green light. There is a count in for each of these traffic lights to set the speed for the students counting to four. So this is your red light. One, two, three, four. Ta, 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 za, ta, za, ta, 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 ta. That's incredibly slow. If I jump to the other extreme of really fast, and you could hear the metronome there keeping time so the students don't speed up, this is the fast version. One, two, three, four. Ta, 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 ta. So this can be really played around with. You can make some really tricky rhythms. You can create your own shapes of these as well. Fantastic. Students love making their own music. Okay, this is a variation on our hearing rhythms. So I've got six short rhythms and down the bottom we've got some ears and behind these ears are recorded sounds that are actually these rhythms being played. So I'm asking students to hear and think about what they're hearing and choose which the answer is out of the written rhythms on the board. So if we have a listen to one. I think that sounded like ta, 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 ta. So I'm going to click my ear up to here. We'll listen to one more. Let's choose this one. You could hear a knock in between there. We're not sure about that. Let's listen again. I think it was ta, a, ta, a. And the teacher, of course, would tell a student whether they were right or wrong with that answer. So just another way to listen and link um, sound to music symbol. Here's another way of looking at that, maybe for the more scientifically minded. Um, these are now sound waves. So same idea, exactly the same rhythms we just saw, but recorded a sound wave, so we listen again. Quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow. So I'd say T, T, ta, T, T, ta. So I'm looking for something in this visual description that looks like it went quick, quick, slow. We've got a bright student who's guessed it's number six. So they're going to drag the ear down and we're going to reveal the answer. T, T, ta, T, T, ta. They're absolutely right. Do one more. Three nothings and then a sound. That's our answer over here. So listen again. Okay, I'm happy with that. I want to put it over here. Did I have three nothings and a sound? Whoops. I placed it in the wrong one. Try again. There we go. Three nothings and a sound. So, another way to look at sound and symbol. Okay, on to pitch. Pitch talks about, um, instead of our beats and our rhythms in music, we're now talking about how high or how low our sounds are. And pitch and rhythm come together to make our music, of course. So, here's our treble clef, the first symbol I introduced to my primary students. And I would be explaining to them that this symbol tells us something about the music we're about to hear. It in fact tells us that the music we're about to hear is for high notes, for high sounds. And we might think of some instruments that we know make high sounds. And we talk about how on their music this symbol would appear. So things like flutes and trumpets, soprano voices and piano. The next thing we talk about is how many lines are here next to the treble clef. And the fact that I can draw a line on, an, on a, a note on a line, and I will call that a line note, and a note to fill up between two lines. So because we're filling up the space, we call it a space note. So space notes, I can draw four of them to fill up the gaps between those lines. 
and they each have their own name, own letter of the alphabet, F, A, C and E. Just so happens it spells the word face, so the little rhyme I use is notes in the space spell face. Then of course we have notes that can be drawn on lines, E, G, B, D and F, from the bottom line to the top line, and we can come up with little rhymes to help them remember that order. Obviously, egg the differ is not a word like face was. So we have every green bus drives fast or every girl buys design and fashion. A myriad of rhymes you can create to remember notes on lines. But the important thing to do is once you differentiate, we've got notes that can sit on lines and notes that can sit in spaces, is that in music, we need to think of them also as being all together so that we can create a pattern of line, space, line, space, line, space, line, space, line, space. Then I'd be asking students to notice, can you see a pattern now with the letters down the bottom? Eventually somebody will realise that we've got some of the alphabet going on, so they will see A, B, C, D, E, F, and I'll see a continuation of E, F down the bottom, E, F with a G. That would get us talking about how notes get named in music, what letters we use. So the musical alphabet is the first seven letters of our alphabet repeated. So this diagram just shows students in a visual format that A, B, C, D, E, F and G, if I rotate it round, gets recycled over and over and over and over and over again, all the way up and down the stage in music. Okay, once students have mastered the idea of rhythm and now they've started to master the idea of reading pitch, what we can do is write some music that mixes the two ideas together and see if they can find their notes on this keyboard above. This keyboard is labelled with all the letter names from the musical alphabet. So what I've done here is I've created a short song. I'd start by reading the rhythm. So we've got ta, ta, ta. Ta, 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 ah. If we can all clap that rhythm, that's step one. Step two would be then to look at where the round part of the note has been drawn, which line or which space, and we'd be using our face and every green bus drives fast to name our notes together. So we've got F, F, C, C, D, D, C. The important thing for the students then to know is when you speak those letters, we've got to speak them in that rhythm of ta, 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 ta. So F, F, C, C, D, D, C, E, because it's a ta at the end. So here's my F, F, find it on my keyboard. C, C, D, D, C, E. And we've created Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. So a way to link the two ideas together of rhythm and pitch and now put it on an instrument. And I think that's all we've got.